3.3 deals with a specific form of an equation and the different pieces that we can take um, from seeing an equation in that form. It's helpful. So we've considered two forms so far of a linear equation. So we've looked at the ax plus by equals c when that version is um, easier to graph using the x and the y-intercepts because we can plug in zeros and it's simple. And the other form that we're going to look more at today is that y equals mx plus b4. We haven't given it a name yet, but we will today. And from that form, we know what? The value on the back, the constant b, is the y-intercept of that line. The y-intercept happens at that point, 0b. Always the value, the constant on the back. Even if the order is switched around, we're looking for just the constant, not the thing that's attached to x. But we're going to be looking at that in this section. What is m? That's the constant we haven't really looked at yet. I know x and y are my variables. b is the y-intercept, but what is m according to the line? So look at those following graphs and their equations to see if you can deduce any information about m. We've talked a little bit about this already. When it's positive, it's going up from left to right. When it's negative, it's going down. Okay? And the steepness of the line. If the number of m, the number on the front of x, is large, it increases really fast. Or if it's negative and large, it decreases rapidly. Okay, or we could start kind of leveling off with a smaller m value. So, my picture looks a little bit different than yours, but this is the same line that you have to the right of those four pictures. So we want to consider this line with two points, P and Q. So let's pick some. We have infinitely many options, but I want easy ones that are at intersections so I can tell exactly where that line is hitting. So I'm going to call Q the point 2, 1. So travel over 2, up 1. This one is Q. And I'll give the coordinates just so we don't forget. And the second point is going to be P over here at 4, 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, up 2 should fall on your line. So your picture is just zoomed in a little bit more than mine. How do we move from Q to P? What has to happen? So you have grids on yours. It's a little bit easier. But what do we have to do to get from Q to P? I have to rise how many units? Rise one to get on the same horizontal level as P. So we have to rise one unit. Then what? Now that I'm on the same horizontal level, I need to run how many? One, two. Two units over. Run two units. Then I hit P. So we call that change in the Y's, how I'm moving up and down, the rise. Okay, and we call the change in the X's, how you're moving along the X um, axis, we call that the run. So rise, up and down, run, left and right. So the ratio of rise over run is the same for any two points on a line. So I could pick other points Q and P, maybe Q is 0, 0, P stays here. Okay, so that ratio is going to be larger, appear larger, but it's still exactly the same. Because from 0, I would have to go up 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, which is still the same ratio um, for the slant of the line. So we call that ratio the slope. The slope describes the slant. How fast is it increasing or decreasing? So the slope of a line containing two points x1, y1, x2, x2, y2, so they're just separate, is given by the difference between the y's over the difference between the x's. So we look at that ratio, the rise over the run. So let's take p and q and talk about rise over run, figuring out the slope, then actually proving it algebraically using this little formula. So, what am I thinking the slope is? 
in terms of rise over run. So again, from Q, I had rise 1 and run 2 to get to P. So I'm thinking that line is increasing at a rate of a half constantly. And it is constant because it's straight. So, algebraically, now let's take the coordinates of those points and prove that it is actually a half. So again, M, this was kind of visually we proved. Okay, but drawings can be inaccurate. So this is more solid proof. All right. So, P and Q were 2, 1, and 4, 2. The order doesn't matter as long as you are consistent with choosing um, X1 and Y1 from the same pair. We can't mix them up at all. So, my Y value, I'm going to let this one be first. The Y coordinate of one of the points was 2. And I need to subtract the Y coordinate of my other point, which was 1. So, again, difference between the Ys the rise over the difference between the x's. So I chose from this point first, so I have to choose the x coordinate from that point again. So difference between the x's. So what are we looking at? 1 over 2, which is what we were thinking visually. So this is the slope between P and Q or Q and P, however you want to order it. Okay. Well, that's also the slope of the line everywhere else, since it's linear. It's changing constantly. We don't have any funky curves or anything like that. Okay. So, next page. Graph the line containing the points 4, minus 4, 3, and 2, minus 6. And we want to find the slope. So we're going to look at this visually. We're going to graph the points, see what we're thinking, then prove it algebraically that it is what we say it is. So let's plot those. Minus 4, 3. So I'm looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, up 1, 2, 3. And 2, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's very hard to be precise on this thing. But go ahead and connect those two dots and see what kind of slope we're looking at. So just based off of the fact that it's decreasing from left to right, tells me the slope's going to be what? So we had increasing, it was positive. If it's decreasing, it's going to be negative. So we have a lot of checks. But again, let's prove that. So I'm starting, I'm just going to label these points. So we don't forget. To move from one to the other, what do I have to do? Okay. So I'm going to start here. From this point to get to the same horizontal level as this other point, how many units do I have to rise? So I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. So all together, this was 9 units up, so in the positive direction. Okay, so slope is, I had to rise 9, and now I have to run in the negative direction. So it's going to be a minus. How many units? So I'm at 2, and I need to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this was 6 units left. Okay. Is there an easier way to report that? Yeah, we can simplify. It's going to be the same as minus 3 halves. So it's negative. It fits our connotation of it's decreasing from left to right, so it should be negative. And now, algebraically. Algebraically. Let's prove. So, difference between the y's over the difference between the x's. Doesn't matter the order, again, as long as you're consistent from taking these from the same point, taking those from the same pair. So, um, I'm going to let this one go first. So, my y coordinate is 3, and I'm subtracting 
my y coordinate of this point. So I'm subtracting a negative, which is going to turn into positive. So I took from this point first, so I need to take the x value from there. So minus 4, and I'm subtracting the x coordinate from the other, minus 2. So what are we looking at? 3 plus 6, minus a minus gives us a plus. In the denominator, I'm looking at minus 6. So, do we get the same? Yep. But again, this is more um, profound proof rather than just drawing a picture and vis visualizing it because we're humans, we can be off. Okay. So, next one for you. Graph the line containing the points minus 2, 3 and 3, 5. Find its slope. So plot the points first. Minus 2, 3. What did that one look like? Minus 2 up 1, 2, 3. Again, mine's probably not very accurate because I'm very short. And 3, 5. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right. I'm going to roughly connect the dots. Not so bad. And visualizing. If I start from this point, how many units do I need to rise to get to the same level as this one? So it's looking like one, two, we have to go up. And then how many did we have to run to get to the next point? So from here, one, two, three, four, is it five? Five of them. Five right. The grids are very helpful when you're doing these. All right, so positive, positive direction, and it's increasing from left to right, so it should be positive. So we're thinking two-fifths, and we can prove it, again, algebraically, just to make sure. So my point, I should have labeled it, and this one, difference between the y's. 5 minus 3, order doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. So y minus y, x minus x. So I've got 2 over 5. We proved it, proved it, along with our visual representation. We got the same thing. All right, so the slope of the line tells how it slants. A line with positive slope slants what direction from left to right? It goes up from left to right. Left to right. We always go in that direction as well as if you're reading, reading the graph. We read left to right. The larger the slope, the steeper the slant. A line with negative slope slants what direction? Down from left to right. Okay, so we've seen those cases. And given to you are a few additional ones that we haven't talked about yet, but we will get to. So just comparing. Very far left. It's a small fractional uh, slant, slope, so the line isn't increasing very fast. But if I look at the reciprocal of that, 10 thirds is what? More than three. So it's pretty steep comparatively. If I make it negative, it's flipping upside down. And again, negative is just decreasing left to right. If I have a horizontal line, again, we don't have a slope. The slope is zero. We do have a slope. The slope is zero. Excuse me. If it's vertical, we don't technically have a slope. It's not defined. But we'll look at those last two cases later today. Last little part of this board. It's possible to find the slope of a line from its equation. So if we don't have two points, if I just have what's defined to be, I can find the slope. So we have this line that's given to us. It goes through 0, 3, and 1, 5. y equals 2x plus 3. And this is the definition, and this is the visual representation of the solutions to that line. So, how we've been working on it, we can find the slope to this. So again, difference between the y's over difference between the x's. What am I looking at? 
2 over 1, which is just 2. So, based over visualizing the rise over run, we can figure out the slope. And what do you notice? On the definition of the line, we have that constant, 2. It's attached to the x. It's out on the front. So the slope, slope of this line is 2, which is the coefficient, coefficient on x, on that x term, whatever constant is attached to that. So determining slope from the equation, slope of the line y equals mx plus b is m, it's the thing out on the front. 